Today we're doing the first episode of Synth Fundamentals in a pretty long time. We'll be covering a topic that will help you not just in your synthesis, but in your music production in general. And that's gain staging, which is the management of amplitudes across your signal chain. This should also answer a pretty common question that I get, which is why do some synthesizers have multiple overdrive stages? The response that I normally see is that it allows you to get more overdrive. And that's not quite correct. You can get more overdrive, but the more important thing is that you're getting different types of overdrive based on the placement within the signal chain. Before I can really explain how this works, we need to understand a little bit of terminology. So let's talk about signals and headroom. A signal is a stream of electricity that carries information from one place to another. The signals that we're interested in carry audio, and they have frequencies which determine their pitch, shapes which determine their timbre or tone quality, and amplitudes which determine their volume. Headroom is a maximum space allotted for amplitude, so it's essentially the hard limit on our maximum volume. Imagine that you're jumping rope in a hallway. If the hallway is wide enough, then you can jump freely. The rope fully extends and everything is simple and clean. But if you're using a longer rope or in a narrower hallway, the rope doesn't have room to fully extend. So instead the rope clips the wall, or more aptly the wall clips the rope. In audio, this is known as clipping, and it occurs when we have an amplitude that exceeds our headroom. While clipping is mainly a product of amplitude, its result is a change in timbre. To understand why, we have to go back to that jump rope example. If we put a super precise GPS on the midpoint of the jump rope, and then graphed its position over time, we'd get a sort of waveform. In the wide hallway, it would be pretty much a sine wave, but in the narrower hallway, we'd see flattening at the top and the bottom, as the extremes are forced to move along the wall instead of fully extending. So what was a sine wave becomes more of a square wave. And that sounds kind of like this. There are a few different kinds of clipping as well, and they don't all follow the exact same rules. Hard clipping is when the excess signal is lopped off at a sharp angle. Soft clipping is when the excess signal is squished to fit within the headroom. Wave folding is when the excess signal folds back on itself. Each of these sounds distinct from the others. Generally, clipping causes an increase in overtones, increasing harmonic complexity and brightness. And now we can finally talk about gain staging. Gain staging is the management of amplitudes throughout your signal chain. While this might sound relatively simple, it's much trickier than it sounds. Each component within your signal chain produces a certain base level of noise. This is known as your noise floor. So you want to input the maximum amount possible to maximize your signal to noise ratio. But if you input too much signal, you get clipping. This is the central tension of gain staging. If we input too little signal, we get a relative increase in noise. If we input too much, we get distortion. There's also an additive element here, since each component has its own internal noise and can produce its own distortion. So if I run an already noisy signal into an amplifier, I can't push the output of that amplifier without pushing that noise as well, since at this point it's already baked into the signal. There's sort of an order of operations thing going on, where each output is the input of the next phase, but that input determines the potential outputs. This might seem very dry and technical, but there's actually a lot of room to use this creatively to expand our sonic possibilities. Let's take a look at the gain staging within the sub-37. Our mixer has independent levels for both oscillators, the sub-oscillator, and noise. Each one of these can be overdriven, leaving the others intact. We also have a feedback stage, which we can use to clip the sum of these signals. The final result goes into our filter, where we can do some sound shaping. But we're not done yet, because we also have a multi-drive stage where we can overdrive the filter output, and then our total output volume, which can be used to overdrive any external gear. So you can be very deliberate with where you want the clipping to occur. There's also one more thing which adds even more flexibility, and that's the way that overdriven signals interact with your filter. If we boost the resonance on the sub-37, we lose a lot of our low end. If we keep boosting, we eventually hit self-oscillation. But if we max out the headroom of the filter by overdriving in the mixer stage, it changes the way that our resonance behaves. We don't lose as much low end, and often we won't reach the same degree of self-oscillation. 
I recommend experimenting with this because it's a very distinct effect, and it helps to have some degree of familiarity with it. And speaking of self-oscillation, that brings us to a very particular quirk with post-filter overdrives, such as a sub-37 multi-drive. Self-oscillation creates a sine wave, but by overdriving the filter you can add overtones to that sine wave, and push it towards a square wave. With careful gain staging, you can use this to add layers to your patches. So to go back to the question in the beginning of the video, why do some synthesizers have multiple overdrives? It's not about having more overdrive, it's about having different overdrive. Depending on where you clip and how you clip, you can get sounds that are qualitatively different. I hope this helps. If you like this video, like, subscribe. If there is anything you want to see in a future video, toss it in the comments below. I'm that beat. This has been Synth Fundamentals. Thanks for watching.